What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw, and today we're coming at you with something pretty interesting, uh, something new. This is the new gun from CMMG. This is a Banshee, which you guys have seen before. A little bit longer barrel, obviously, which we'll get to here in a minute. Uh, it's the MK4 in the 46 by 30 which is a caliber probably a lot of you haven't heard of, and those of you who have are probably HK guys. Uh, the reason I say that is because I don't know a lot of other guns that chamber the 46 by 30 aside from the uh, MP7, which is a very famous gun from uh, Heckler & Koch that is kind of a uh, PDW that was put in against the uh, military trials with the FNP90. Uh, both of them are made for a similar thing. They were both looking for uh, small light cartridges and small light guns that can be used by guys behind enemy lines, that kind of thing. For what purpose is debatable. There's some debatable purpose on whether or not they wanted an armor piercing capability uh, for like Russian armor, stuff like that. There's some possibilities of they just wanted it to penetrate level three armor. There's some possibilities that they didn't want either of those things. They just wanted a small light caliber. Regardless, here we are with the 46 by 30 uh, Ballistically similar to something like the 17 HMR. So it's not going to be the biggest hard-hitting caliber in the world. Sorry about the wind, guys. We tried to get out of the wind. Uh, we've been trying to film this video for like four days, and there's been 20, 30 mile an hour plus winds every single day. So right now we're hiding behind a garage. We got the dead cat on. My bad about the audio if there is any uh, issues. But anyway, the 4.6 by 30 millimeter is a caliber that I have absolutely zero experience with, aside from internet research. The MP7 is touted in some circles, not so much in others, right? Uh, it's a cool gun, it's a compact gun, but the caliber is a little bit up in the air, and honestly, so is 5.7. There's a lot of people who really like 5.7, there's a lot of people who really don't. I try to get, I try to stay away from the caliber, caliber debates because there's pros and cons to everything, and it just really depends on what niche you're looking for. Pros to 4.6 by 30, from what I hear at least, we're gonna find out. Uh, very low recoil and uh, pretty good effect on target. However, there are better things out there. Uh, you're essentially looking at a 40 grain round going 1900 feet per second. That's a lot different than something like a nine millimeter or 45. And we'll actually have a whole bunch of rounds in my pocket here for a caliber comparison. Uh, a pretty cheesy uh, hillbilly science one where I dropped one on the ground already. But here we have a 30-30. That is a legitimate rifle round. You can aim down a little bit if you want. Can you see it? Right at my balls there. That is a 308, and none of these are gonna stand up like I wanted them to because real life. <laughs> this is a uh, 556 here, right there, which looks a lot smaller next to the 3030 and 308. We have a 7.5 FK round from FK Bruno, which is extremely powerful for a pistol round, one of the most powerful pistol rounds. Then we have a nine millimeter. There's a 45 on the ground uh, that I'm not gonna look for right now, but I will in a little bit. All right, so there's your 45, America's cartridge. And then we have the 4.6 by 30. And as you can see there, that is a very small round. I mean, you're talking a 40 grain projectile. So. That's one thing to be aware of. I know a lot of people that are big proponents of this caliber, a lot of people that are big proponents of 5.7, but the sad reality is you put it next to a 5.56 and it looks a little bit smaller. Even next to this uh, 7.5 here, it looks pretty small. And I know it's longer and has more powder than the nine, but as you can see, the nine millimeter projectile and the 45 projectile are also much bigger. Uh, this is a round that works on velocity. Uh, it's, a, it's a high high speed round and you're gonna get a lot of good penetration with that. Usually the smaller round, the more the more powder, something like a 5.56 penetrates real well. Uh, that's the reason why 5.56 can damage AR-500 targets for a 7.62 by 39. Uh, you can usually get a little bit closer. 300 blackout, you can usually get a little bit closer. Uh, that being said, the, the effect of this isn't up for debate for me. It's obviously used by uh, militaries around the world, so they've obviously found a use for it. It's just a matter of whether or not it's right for you. It's got decent level three armor penetration capabilities. Uh, that being said though, it is relatively hard to find and it is relatively expensive, but it is a, a low recoil, fairly productive round. So it's similar to, similar in the 5.7 camp. 5.7 camp, you can have more ammunition in the magazine, which is really nice, has less recoil, but it is virtually as effective as nine millimeter. It's just gonna be more expensive. So uh, putting that in a, uh, a platform like the CMMG, I think makes a lot of sense. And the reason for that is because the MP7 is not capable to be purchased by civilians. So you have this round going around that a lot of people are fans of, but nobody can actually get a platform to put the caliber in. 
whereas now CMMG has made the Banshee in 4.6 for those guys who want the damn 4.6 round. And CMMG is famous for making these guns in a whole bunch of different calibers. Essentially a, uh, a delayed blowback AR with AR controls and pretty decent reliability, durability track record overall. I've had three CMMG Banshees now and very little issues, if at all, with any of them. I don't think I've had any reliability issues with any of the nine millimeter ones I've had, so I don't see a reason why we would in this one either. Now this one's configured a little bit different, a little bit longer barrel, comes with the brake right out of the factory, and now muzzle brakes are a lot more effective on calibers that are higher in velocity. The faster the caliber's going, usually the better the muzzle brake works, so it makes sense that it would be on this and not on the nine millimeter, since this is traveling roughly about twice as fast as a nine millimeter. And that's one thing to be aware of. When, when you look at the caliber and you look at the bullet weight, that isn't everything. Bullet weight is not everything. It's one half of a, of a, of a factor. So you have a 40 gram projectile, which is about half the weight of a nine, but it's moving twice as fast as a nine. So I'd be interested to see what performance we're actually gonna get out of it. Now, the Banshee is just AR controls, all that good stuff with the SBA3 brace, pretty sweet color and all that. And we're gonna be running the uh, ACSS G2 Cyclops on it for primary arms. And the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna do a review on this and I wanna do a review on this. So we're gonna be doing them at the same time. Is this the ideal uh, optic for this uh, particular setup? Not really sure, but I do like prism scopes and I like this scope in particular, or optic I should say, because the one power optic, but uh, I like this because it has red dot capability, but it also has a BDC out the distance, which is kind of cool. So uh, it gives you a little bit of be best of both worlds, and if your dot goes dead, you still have an etch reticle, which is also pretty cool in my personal opinion. Uh, the downside to those particular type of optics though is gonna be eye relief. You're gonna have a little bit less eye relief and a little more parallax to deal with than a standard red dot like an M.T1, T2, comp M4, that kind of shit. So uh, yeah, let's go to the range, shoot it, and let's see if all of my predictions come true. Before we do that though, I wanna thank my patient supporters. Thank you guys very much. Because of you, we have ammunition and guns that shoot on the channel. So big ups to you for that. And uh, big ups to CMMG for sending me this gun to test out. I do have a friend at CMMG that I drink beer with on occasion. Take that in consideration that I did get this gun full review. Uh, so bear that in mind when you watch the video. really low recoil, a lot lower than a nine, a lot lower. All right, so we're not too bad there. We gotta go back further. Okay, okay. Set on this is really nice. I bet this is gonna go real fast. We're gonna have a lot of fun. baby pings I know, like they're right? not loud they're just little babies <laughs> well it's a small it's a i mean comparatively a small round always fun to zero with watery eyes yeah, it's the wind's cold getting out. Up behind my glasses. I'm know? all sniffly. Sorry, people. Right. It's a fast caliber, though. It's just like the five-seven, like a swarm of bees concept. You're gonna like this. I feel like I am. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm not sure if we should be shooting steel this close with this, but we're going to. Prism optic, that's pretty fast. <laughs> you just really like to hip shoot, don't ya? Yeah. What can I say? You look good doing Cowboy. it. Cowboy. 
They hit it. Yeah? Not that. I'm out anyway. Oh man. I hate when you just get started and then you're out. Yeah, that's what she said. It's going so fast that like usually there's a delay at 50 yards and now it's just fire ping like it's hard to hear. Like 80 yards. Yeah, this is 20 mile an hour for wind. 20 mile an hour wind. You know, I was worried of this little caliber that get pushed around by the wind so much because when we were zeroing it, we we had a hard time getting a zero because uh, the gust of wind would end up pushing the the round three inches to the left. Uh, you know, in uh, from 50 yards, uh, little rounds don't like wind a lot. But back here, seems to be just fine. Now that's a 12 inch target. In all fairness. But it's all day. Let's go back a little further. Okay. Doing a little off-roading over there? Yeah. I see nature's tripod here. I like this. I gotta tell you. Hold on, it's gonna take me a get it a minute to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> Alright, you are up with the Banshee 46. Alright, let's see. Oh, I have it on safe, like a good girl. That's a yeah. It's... It's 70 yards. Does this turn you on? A little. <laughs> Between that and the John Snow coat. Damn, girl. What do you think? That was a lot of fun. I liked it a lot. I was hitting the big ones pretty effectively, so I moved to the smaller one. So I feel I feel pretty good about what I achieved today with the 4.6. So what do you like about that versus 5.56? Five, five, Obviously you like, I mean, it the was, less blast is nice. Yeah, it was way less recoil. It was, it seems a little more delicate. Yeah, it's less recoil than a 5.56 five, five, or a 9. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Slightly more than a 22, just barely. Like, I like how it's kind of cutely my size. Yeah, so like, what I like about like it is the Banshee has a 5 inch barrel, which I don't love. Whereas this has got that 8 inch barrel. Yeah. And uh, I think it's an 8 inch barrel. And uh, I like that better. More hand guard to grab, more velocity. Uh, these, these small, tiny little rounds are velocity dependent. Longer barrel, real good idea. And it's not getting hot. Like, this is. I'm gonna have to come out here and shoot this by myself because I'm having just way too much fun. You're gonna have to pay for the ammo. Oh. I'm, I'm kidding. Dang no, it. Sorta, of. it's expensive. <laughs> Bobby, it's windy. All right, so it's super windy, and again, sorry about that, but uh, we've shot about 150 rounds through the Banshee 4.6 right now, and I can't help but call comparisons to things like the FNP90 in 5.7, or even the new Caltech, which we just did, that's in 5.7 as well. Uh, similar caliber for similar niche, and I think that this, in my opinion anyway, overperforms the previous two. And I know that's kind of a loud statement, especially considering I wasn't very excited in the first place. But the reality is, is that delivers that same caliber performance in 40 round mags, by the way. These are 40 round mags, not 30, like a standard AR. And instead of the P90 or the uh, the new Caltech, these are super easy to reload. 
So if you run out of 40, you can have a new 40 in a second or a second and a half. Whereas with the P90 or the, or, or the Kel-Tec, it's gonna take, you have 50 rounds, but it takes a real long time to reload and you may or may not have a stoppage during the process. Ergonomics on this are a lot better. Recoil and pulse on this is a lot better. Trigger on this is infinitely better. This actually has a really good trigger on it. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. 40 round mags, eight inch barrel, for around $1,200-ish, somewhere in there. I'm not sure what they come out at yet. I'm just quoting a similar price of, of the Banshee that I got mine for. Uh, these, I believe, are released as of today as we're filming this, so prices are not super available yet, but I assume they're gonna be anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500, which is comparable to the kel and a little bit less than the P90 in most, in most circles. Is it as cool as the P90? No, it's not. It doesn't look as cool. It's not gonna be in Starship Troopers, but it does, in my opinion, work better. Uh, you have a collapsible length of pull there uh, with a collapsible SBA 3 brace. This is a pistol, so it is easier to take with you in certain situations. Very light, you five pound gun. Uh, you're getting a little bit less barrel length between that and the uh, P90, uh, just because that's a bullpup, but you are getting a significantly better trigger and more inherent overall accuracy, in my opinion. A super accurate gun, super low recoil, really fun to shoot. Downsides is the same as the upside, sort of. So it's the downside is the caliber. The caliber is light, it's uh, fairly effective, but it is expensive and it is kind of hard to find. Now, the more guns chambered in it, the less and less expensive it'll be. We've seen that with the 5.7. But still, as of right now, gonna be a lot more difficult to find than your average nine millimeter 45 and it's gonna be more per round as well. So is this gonna be the gun for everybody? Absolutely not. But if you're looking for a fairly effective gun that is really light recoil, or you're just in the MP7 and this is the only thing you can get, I think it's a good way to go. It's reliable, it's accurate. What can I say? Pretty good gun. But before we leave, before we leave, tricked you because I forgot. What do you think of it? You shot 50 rounds through it. I had a lot of fun. You wanna, you wanna sit in the seat? You wanna sit in the hot seat, tell them about I it? I don't. Okay, why don't you tell them right there then? Maybe they can I hear you. I guess I'll sit in the hot seat. Sit no, in the hot seat. No. I'm gonna leave the gun up. Look at it. Woo! Okay, so I think that it was not only fun, but it was easy to shoot. I felt like I could really stay on target easily. Um, it also, to an untrained eye, looks just as scary as an AR in my opinion. So I feel like if someone didn't know what was going on, like if you would hand this to me, I wouldn't be like, oh, that's a 4.6 whatever right. but so, in all fairness somebody's shooting at you they wouldn't notice either well that's true <laughs> you know what i mean that's what i mean gun's a gun it, it still looks scary while being uh easier to hold on to easier to shoulder because of it's got less recoil than an ar and i feel like i could still defend myself with this that had a lot less recoil than nine millimeter i can't what? stress that enough the CMMG Banshee and 9 is controllable, but that's that's another level. Yeah, this and this was way more fun than I thought it was going to be, and I'm definitely going to sneak this out of the house and uh, go to the range by myself. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters. Remember to recycle. I'll check you later.